What's up guys? So in this video I want to be showing you all the next microservice that I'm building out for my project as well as starting the Blazor server side app. Um, I'm super excited to be starting that. I've never used Blazor uh, server side so that'll be, uh, that'll be really cool to figure out how that works. Uh, I put some time into watching just like some videos on how, how to set it up, how it works. Um, it seems pretty cool, so I took a little bit of time to, to get that all set up, and I got some footage of showing like the app being created and everything like that, so um, hopefully it comes out alright, but uh, by the end of this video, you will see the microservice um, built out where it's working, and then you'll see it connected to the Blazor uh, web app. And keep in mind, we are, I am following the microservice like architecture. So I'm not um, directly injecting the service into the Blazor app. I'm, I'm making an API call out to my API that's running at the same time as my Blazor web app is. And then remember it gets funneled through my API gateway that routes it to the, um, the service that's running. So it returns back um, the data that I need to consume on the Blazor app and it works like that. And then it'll show you on the, the web app. Um, but it's real neat because like I'm thinking about it, like if the service were to stop working it's not connected or it's not like injected directly into the web client so if that service were to break and assuming that's not like a core piece of the um, the web app it doesn't really have any effect on the actual existence of the web app like if that service went down the web app would still be persisting um, so it's loosely coupled and it, it's really cool to be able to program like that because I definitely see the advantages to, to doing so because it, it seems like you could make it so that you have some backup services in the event that that main service went down. Um, but I also see a lot of advantages too of my not having to inject or having your dependencies uh, on the, uh, the services that you have. And so there's a lot of advantages I see. I'm not going to go into all the details, but let me show you guys the programming content right now, and then I'll, I'll talk about it after. So one thing I want to point out in this part of the video was I was specifically looking up um, a design pattern that you may often see in development where you separate out the actual execution of the request out of the, um, the kind of the service layer. So you might often see this as maybe a queries class or a command processor or command execute class. Um, that's often common practice to do that because sometimes the logic of forming the request is often the same for a lot of requests in your class. Okay, so as you saw, uh, you saw my microservice running, you saw my Blazor web app running, um, and you saw the API gateway f gateway functioning as intended. So it's pretty cool. Like it's coming to uh, it's coming together. Um, it's definitely it's definitely sweet to make a project like this. I've never done, I've never followed the microservice architecture or done anything you know like that. So this is this is sweet. Like I'm definitely learning a ton by doing this. And I've never used Blazor, and the little bit I've used Blazor for this, Blazor's awesome. Like, I definitely see a lot of advantages to using Blazor, and definitely, there's a, there's a ton of potential. Ooh. Sorry, loud, loud car. 
uh, there's a lot of potential to using Blazor to um, and for like one, like one thing in particular like if you work at a company and they have a lot of different JavaScript frameworks they're using so maybe it's React or really a Angular Vue whichever one it may be all of a sudden now if they're using um, .NET already or .NET Core already they can kind of stop using the JavaScript and then use Blazor and everyone who knows how to use C Sharp really well will be able to pick up this really well too. So it kind of almost, I think it'll make it easier on developers to not have to learn so many different frameworks that are out there for JavaScript. Because there's a lot and they each have different ways of going about doing things. And I know from like my perspective, like if, I, so like me, like I was hired on as like a C Sharp software developer and I have to use some of the JavaScript frameworks just for some of the stuff we do on like the front end and like um, some of our web apps use those JavaScript frameworks. But um, it definitely like for me, like I, uh, JavaScript, that stuff's not my strong suit. Now, of course, I can learn, but my strong suit is in C Sharp and like .NET and .NET Core and stuff like that. So on my end, like I'm going to learn what I need to know how to do to get the task done in JavaScript. But I feel like it's hard for me to learn JavaScript really well at the same time as learn C Sharp really well. So I may, I may, there, my best practices in terms of JavaScript might be lacking compared to if I had, if I know C Sharp super well and then I can use Blazor and that's like the same thing as like Razor templating views and I know good practices for that and I can just focus in on that one area. Um, so I think there's gonna be a huge, um, there's gonna be a huge opportunity for this when Blazor kind of starts getting momentum. Because um, right now, the Blazor server side is production ready, and then Blazor client side using WebAssembly, that is gonna be ready, I think, actually, I think next month by this year, um, it will be, I think it's production ready by then, I'm pretty sure, but when that goes out, that's gonna be really cool, because that'll be like a true single page application. Because um, what that basically does, so basically Blazor on the server side now, I mean, it still is rendered like on the server, uh, but this Blazor WebAssembly, the browser basically downloads uh, a .NET runtime right on the browser, so everything runs on the person's browser. And like, there's a lot of benefits to doing that, and that's really like a truly like a single page application because that provides for like true offline support. So that'll be I, that, that's going to be huge, I think, when that comes out. So I definitely see a lot of uh, like. There's definitely a lot of incentive to learn Blazor right now because before WebAssembly, all the client side stuff comes out production ready. I definitely can. I definitely wouldn't be surprised if companies started to adopt um, Blazor and, and everything that comes along with it because now you can. You don't have to rely so much on all these JavaScript frameworks and just all the oddities that come with those things. Um, and I think it'll really be helpful for developers to focus in on that one skill and get super good at it, but it can do so many things now. So like it, it's less necessary to learn a JavaScript framework. Like, like if I were to go from a place that used React and then I'm gonna go a place that uses Angular, it's gonna have some, there's gonna be similarities, but there's just gonna be differences in terms of how the frameworks handle certain things. Um, but if they use Blazor, I know C Sharp well, then you can just kind of translate that over to that. Um, so that'll be really cool to see. Um, so I, there's going to be a ton of opportunity for this. So if you have the if you have the chance to work on a project using Blazor, definitely I would recommend it, especially before WebAssembly stuff comes out. And when that comes out, <laughs> learn it pretty quick, and then get that get those skills and put them on your resume. Because I definitely see it being this just seems like there's just going to be huge opportunity um, with Blazor. So super excited about it. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. There's going to be a lot more content around this project. I'm not done. And I'm not even close to being done, but at least it's encouraging to me to see it kind of being like wired up right now um, and it working. So I have to learn a lot uh, on the DevOps side, what I'm going to use to deploy. I think I'm just going to deploy to, deploy to Azure and then set up everything with Docker and containers and maybe use Kubernetes, I think. I don't know yet. Uh, but there's huge learning curve there. I've never used Azure or um, I've never, I've messed around with Docker, but nothing like production scale or whatever. So gonna have to be learning how to do that and stuff. But guys, this project's gonna be sweet. Uh, hopefully you stick around for it. Uh, I think it'd be pretty cool to see um, the end product. And I think it'll be cool content because Blazor's so new that 
I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kind of excited about it. So hopefully uh, you guys like the videos. Give me suggestions on what you want to want to see for this project. Um, I'll let you. I'll get back with you hopefully. So all right. Yeah. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. So I'll look forward to uh, the next video.